I am not a morning person. Welcome back to another episode of Unplug TV. Quarter to six, but I need to I need to measure the car. I need to see. Oh, we, oh, we need to get up early and measure the car and see if it's an eighty <laughs> percent. In the name of science. Okay, let's have a look. So we were at forty-one percent. Uh, 5.1 come on focus see not not even the camera is working 5.1 kilowatt hours 12 ampere hours charged it's still at 35.9 ampere hours and we are at 74 percent which gives us 27 ampere hours roughly I know with the new battery now the engine kicks in at 11 ampere hours so this is my minimum threshold and I need roughly 9 ampere hours to get to work and another 9 to get home so 18 plus 11 oh it's 29 so we need 29 ampere hours minimum to make it and we are at 26.8 Seven another two ampere hours. Well, give it another 20 minutes and then I check again. It doesn't have to be at 80. It can be at 79 or 85 or so. Okay, we um, we check again. Back later. Oh, look at this. No sun. So we've got 6.25. And we are at 80% now, but I don't like the ampere hours. I really... Let's wait until we get 30 ampere hours, please. So we are now at 82%. Almost 30 ampere hours. And this will be the end of my today's charging cycle. There we go. This is our start point for today. You know what? It doesn't really matter because we will gain about one ampere hour while parking anyway. So this is a this is a huge safety plus. <laughs> so and we're starting our day with 29.4 ampere hours. Ah, 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 and I just. I've just done this test and look at this 0.1 ampere hour down again 35.8 it just went down during the test does that mean the test has failed or is it too early in the test what's this shit okay guys I'll, I'll keep doing this test for the next couple of days but um, it looks like it's not doing anything to my car So, and it looks like this is uh, degradation number seven, eight. I think it's seven. I lost a lost overview. Since I picked up the car, not even two weeks ago. Degradation step number seven down 0.1 ampere hours. I haven't had a 0.5 yet, but um, with the last reset they did in uh, 2017, I did not get a 0.5 for quite a while. So it may still come. When I got the car after the battery replacement, I picked it up with 96.1% state of health. And we are now down to 94.2. So almost 2% degradation in two weeks. Do you reckon this can be the battery? What am I doing to the battery? I also thought about the balancing process at the end of the charging cycle, which is not occurring anymore because we interrupt the charge before it actually comes to this stage. So what is actually happening to the balancing now of the battery cells? Well, as we have seen in um, previous videos, the balancing also happens at the beginning of the charging cycle, depending what the BMS um, decides. So mostly it is at the end of the cycle, but sometimes it occurs also at the beginning of the cycle. So probably we don't need to worry about it. 
and at the moment with uh, 15 kilowatt of load we've got 12 millivolt difference between 80 cells so that is all right the world famous Queensland University overpass 5.6 ampere hours used that's on the high side in summer I wonder why to arrive at work with at least 20 ampere hours in the battery otherwise I can't make it in full electric back home but I think we are good it's about another four or five kilometers or so we are coming into town now and it the speed will be slower 22.3 that should be fine not the first Oh, well a good second place on the car park not too bad okay so we have arrived with 21 ampere hours 21.1 this should give us <coughs> I'm dying this should give us plenty of juice to get home we've got 20 kilometers on the gasometer and I guess we will gain another one ampere hour at least um, until five o'clock four o'clock so 21 it's 22 ampere hours we should be fine So lunch break, I just want to fire up the car and see what state of charge we actually got here now. I'm, I'm obsessed with that. Ooh, I lost minus one ampere hour. <sighs> We're losing energy again. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, we've got 20 ampere hours left. Okay, let's turn off the car. If we gain any energy until the rest of the day, until four o'clock when I pick up the car and drive home. It'll be interesting to see, <laughs> see the, the software is totally nuts. One day it gives you uh, an increase of capacity, the next day it loses one ampere hour, it does what it does. Totally stupid nuts. Oh well guys, back in the car, four o'clock and we are in deep shit. Um, We've got um, 30, 39 degrees outside, so it's pretty, um, it's nice and warm, let's put it this way. Probably I cannot turn on the air condition because we will, <laughs> I haven't got enough juice for that. Oh, there was another minus 0.4 ampere hours down. Jeez, that's a lot. So we are down to 19.7. I need to sweat. And we've got only 17 kilometers on the gasometer. 17 kilometers. That's like in the good old times, guys. 20 past four. And we still got 38 degrees outside. Welcome to sunny, hot Australia, huh? And I, I cannot turn on the aircon, really. I am here to save the planet. We cannot afford any fuel consumption today. So I need to make it with only 14 kilometers oh god it's warm in here it's quite warm we had quite an interesting discussion on facebook about um, maintaining state of health in the battery and what people do and one particular person i know he's he's watching my channel <laughs> um, said look i'm looking after my battery i don't have this problem as much as you have and he's actually maintaining a fairly high state of um, health in the battery. I've forgotten. I've forgotten it. I'll, I'll post it here somewhere. So I've asked him, what is your secret? What is the magic you do to your battery to maintain such a high state of health after so many miles and kilometers? And he responded, look, I'm not charging the car fully every day if I don't have to. So obviously he does some shorter trips during the day or only one short trip or whatever. So he doesn't need the full EV range and he doesn't charge the car to 100% or he doesn't fully charge the car to 100%. He also doesn't leave the car plugged in for longer than necessary. So he charges the car fully if he needs the range the night before but if it's for a couple of days, he's not charging 200%. I always say 100%, but we know it's not 100%, it's more like 90% when we say 100%.
that makes sense, does it? Yeah. And um, sometimes he needs, he does a he does a longer trip, and he needs uh, several recharges in between to make it in full electric. So he charges the car probably two times or three times maybe on 3.5 kilowatts during the day during this trip and this obviously at least what he thinks is refreshing the whole system and tells the software what capacity the battery has and the other interesting thing he mentioned is um, everything about 40 miles per hour which is about 65 kilometers per hour he's not driving an electric anymore he turns on the engine at least that's what I get out of his um, uh, post um, because he thinks it, it drains too much energy from the battery and which is not good for the health so this would mean I cannot drive to work on battery at all because I just left town here and I'm driving 80 already so I would I would not make it to work unless I drive very slowly on the highway, which is not good. I, I'm getting his point. He, he, makes, he makes a good statement here with saying... So the, the point he's making is the battery is fairly small and the load is fairly high with this car. And this ruins the battery over time. Definitely, it definitely does. We, we all know this. If you have high input, high output of the battery, it's not good. It's not good for such a small battery to... So I, I fully get his point in saying you need to drive as slowly as possible, draw as little energy from the battery as possible, and be soft to the battery, to the energy, input, output. Probably don't use B5 on the highway when you slow down. Brake before that and make sure the input output power is not crazy high and yes I, I agree I fully agree to this statement or at least this is what I there's nobody on the highway that's good so I'm using a lot of energy now but it's only for a peak moment and then it goes back until I reach 100 so it should be fine as I said I fully agree with this what he says but on the other hand the car is not designed like this if this harms the battery the engine should kick in very early which is then about 60 70 kilometers per hour which would be 40 45 miles per hour or something if this is really harming the battery the engine should kick in also you should be able to charge the car to only 80% as per a scheduled timer, as per a state of charge setting in the car. But but all this is not I need to steer. But all, all this is not designed in the car. You plug it in, you forget about it for days, for weeks. Without harming the battery. That's the plan. You drive the car and it outputs 45 kilowatts from the battery until the battery is fully depleted. If you have a trailer, a caravan or a box trailer, you use these 45 kilowatt, uh, kilowatts and you do this all in full EV range without having the engine turned on. So this is clearly not what the car is designed for. And it is a shame, again it is a shame that they don't give you these options. Why can I not program an upper limit of the charging situation so I programmed the car to stop at 70% because I don't need more energy it should be a setting in the software again 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 the software so anyway I'm uh, driving home now I'm testing this for the week now and see if we have any further degradation when I'm not fully charging the car in the morning or in the night so I will interrupt the charge before it reaches 90%. I'll try to do it between 80 and 90% so it gives me a little bit of buffer. What do you think? How, how do you prolong your battery life, your battery state of health? I mean, as I said, I, I agree with all these 
certain steps but none of them are in the actual manual there's no recommendation in the actual manual saying you can drive the car as you want but if you want to prolong your, your battery life do these and these steps the battery will last longer there's nothing in the manual at all nothing on the website which is a shame it should be on there as a recommendation it's like with an ice car you can't drive in the red area of your rpms but it's not healthy so don't don't do it all the time if you do it occasionally it might be fine but if you do it all the time it's not good and i think you will find in your both hands and i oh no don't i don't and i think you will find uh, this recommendation in the actual manual for your ice car So use this power only in extreme situations, but not all the time. Anyway, long talk again. I made it, people of the internet, I made it 30.2% and no engine. Save the planet again. Okay, so made it. 10.5 amp hours. <laughs> made it once again. Okay guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support. This is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia. Signing off, you stay charged. And we will see us tomorrow for the next video. We will see us tomorrow in the next video. And I probably charge half an hour longer tonight just to make sure I got a little bit of reserve energy here in the car. <laughs> Maybe to turn on the air condition when I go home. It is a bit warm. So, you know what I'm doing now.